We are on a quest to visit all the national parks in the United States. For this stretch of our adventure, my brother Janis joined us from Poland and we are taking him around all of Colorado's national parks to show him the beauty and grandeur of America's national park system. Our first stop was Rocky Mountain National Park. Hey, this is day two. We are standing here at the trailhead for our hike today and it's only 6 a.m. We're getting a real early start. We've just watched the sunrise behind us over there. Today, we're going to be hiking to the top of Flat Top Mountain. Uh, it's about 4.4 miles from here and 2,800 feet of elevation gain, which considering we're already at almost 9,500 feet elevation, this is gonna be a pretty steep climb. But that's not even the end. When we get to the top of Flat Top Mountain, we're then gonna do an extra little hike to Hallett Peak. That's another 0.6 of a mile and another 500 feet or so of elevation gain. So it's gonna be a tough all day hike today, but we're prepared, got plenty of water, got our food, got our first aid kit, and we're ready to roll. From the trailhead, we followed the path to the shore of Bear Lake, which we followed for a short distance before the climb started. Rocky Mountain National Park is home to 280 species of birds, and in 2000 it was designated a global important bird area because the park preserves a diverse habitat for a wide variety of bird species. We ran into a dusky grouse, a hen with its chicks. The dusky grouse is a forest dwelling grouse and is native to Rocky Mountain National Park. We stopped and watched for a while because it was just super cute, although I think my main memory it's going to be Yanis nicknaming them forest chickens, which I think just suits them perfectly. I didn't even think of it. <laughs> I will finish you. We found the first snow. Right, now my turn. <laughs> so we've been hiking just under two hours now, about an hour 45. Distance wise, we're about halfway to the top. We've done 2.2 miles and the hike up to Flat Top Mountain is 4.4, but we've still got a lot of ascent to go. We've done 1,240 feet of ascent and it's 2,800 to Flat Top Mountain and then another 500 to Hallett Peak. It's been beautiful though, the sun's risen, it's definitely warming up, we've all shed a few layers, but this scenery is really spectacular. There are a lot of mosquitoes and bitey things. So every time we stop, we get plagued by them. But we think we're getting pretty close to the tree line soon. So we're really hoping that's going to deter them. And it'll be a bit clearer coming up. A tree that has branches only on one side. Yesterday at the visitor centre, we were learning about some of the conditions up here. And particularly up near the tree line, where conditions are especially harsh. They get icy gusts of up to 150 miles per hour. Very inhospitable. Some of the trees here that are only a few inches in diameter, they can be hundreds of years old. But one of the more notable characteristics is some of the trees have branches only growing on one side. And these are called banner trees. These are trees where the wind has blown from one side and has forced all the branches to grow on the downwind side. There's a lot of those up here at the moment. In a single day, we were experiencing all three ecosystems defined by altitude that exist in Rocky Mountain National Park. The Montan ecosystem is found below 9,000 feet, and that's where we woke up this morning in Glacier Basin Campground at 8,600 feet. In the Montan ecosystem, you can find meandering rivers and open meadows with wildflowers throughout the summer. We've made it up above the tree line now, and the views have just opened up behind us. They are pretty extraordinary but we're now fully exposed to the sun. So getting a little bit warmer now, no shade from the trees. We started the hike in the subalpine ecosystem, which is between 9,000 and 11,000 feet. It is a wet ecosystem with more than 30 inches of precipitation annually. You can find evergreen forests and mountain lakes here. Above 11,000 feet is the alpine ecosystem, characterized by strong winds, cold temperatures, and tundra. 
The soil is extremely thin, so stay on the trails. Many plants hug the ground so that the wind blows over the top of them, and many are dwarf varieties. Most animals migrate to lower elevations before winter, but one exception is the white-tailed ptarmigan that stays all winter in the alpine zone. We're nearly here at the summit of Flattop Mountain. You can certainly see why they call it a flat top mountain. It is completely flat all around me, but up there is where we're going next. So he's made it to the top of Hallett's Peak. Uh, it's pretty high up here. It's definitely time for a lunch stop. So we have our usual camping lunch, uh, tortillas with hummus, homemade hummus, with cheese, with some salami and some cucumber. Gonna have a little bite to eat here and, uh, and then we'll head on down and try and make it down to the bottom before the thunderstorms roll in. With the Hallett Peak Summit at 12,720 feet, this was the longest hike with the highest elevation gain we have done so far since we started our quest to visit all the national park units. to have a little bit of snow and now hopefully we'll get down without sliding on our butts. Whew. It's on the ground. We saw several yellow-bellied marmots. Marmots are one of the largest members of the squirrel family. Their large body size is an adaptation to the cold, high elevation where they live. They store fat, then draw upon their reserves as they hibernate. In fact, they spend over half their life in hibernation. Fun fact, during hibernation, their heartbeat decreases to about 30 beats per minute, and they only take two breaths per minute. Yellow-bellied marmots live in burrows in colonies of 10 to 20 individuals. They eat grasses, flowers, insects, and bird eggs. We're happy we have almost reached the tree line because the clouds are starting to roll in. Some looking pretty gray. So you always want to be under the tree line when there is a thunderstorm coming. And we've just heard a rumble of thunder, so we think we might have timed this quite well just to get into the safety of the trees just as the thunder starts. Fingers crossed we don't get any rain though. I'm not really in the mood to uh, get completely drenched with rain and even worse, hail like we had yesterday. <laughs> rain start then. We just got our first raindrops and we'll see how strong it gets. That's some serious thunder we can hear right now. Now run for your lives! <laughs> We still have about two miles left to the bottom, but hopefully as we go lower, the tree cover will increase and will protect us better from the rain. The rain has stopped raining here, but we still hear a lot of thunder. So we'll see how it goes. Thunder! Feel the thunder! And it started raining again. We saw some people still heading uphill. And yeah, I don't know how I wouldn't do that. It's crazy. With this kind of thunder and clouds, I guess. All the advice, all the warnings say do not hike when you can see rain clouds and things approaching. There is actually thunder going on and they're yeah. still proceeding uphill. The rain has cleared, we're back in the sun, and we're about a third of a mile from the bottom now. Home stretch. Wow, this looks so different from when we were here this morning. 
We left here at six o'clock, about eight hours ago, and this car park now has completely filled up. There's shuttles running. It's just really, really busy here. Top tip, get out early if you can, not just to avoid the weather, but to avoid the crowds as well. This hike we've just done was just over 10 miles, 10 and a quarter miles. We climbed uh, 3,100 feet in total. So it's a pretty good hike. And uh, as I say, it took us about eight hours. So with a half hour lunch, we were hiking for about seven and a half hours. All in, we really enjoyed that hike. I'm just waiting for the others. They've just gone to use the restroom. Now we're finished with the hike. We're gonna head back to the campground, get a shower, get cleaned up, get changed, and then have an awesome campfire and a barbecue for dinner. In the next episode, we will do another big hike in Rocky Mountain National Park, this time to Chasm Lake. So make sure to subscribe for more outdoorsy adventures.